Okay, so when you lay bricks, when you're learning to lay bricks, uh, it's really important to get into good habits right from the start because when you first start, you're thinking about everything that you're doing. The same as when you're driving a car. When you first start to learn to drive a car, you are thinking about every single movement that you do. Then once you pass your test and you're driving, you can drive uh, anywhere um, with hardly even thinking about sort of changing gear or anything because it's all a habit. Same with brickwork. So you really want to get into good habits. Now, the way I was taught um, was good but I then moved on to a different company and I worked with um, the best bricklayer who I've ever, ever seen, ever worked with, had a fantastic privilege working with him uh, and another one as well. Um, but his name was Derek Garman, he's retired now, and he was uh, the best bricklayer, like I said, I've worked with dozens and dozens since. Uh, but the habits that he had, um, I just polished up what I was doing and I changed a few things because he was so fast, he was so neat, and uh, he was just brilliant. So I, I like to think that uh, everything that I do is kind of mirrored from, from him. And like I said, I've worked with other bricklayers as well since then, and um, I do like my way. But again, you have to find the way that you like. Uh, like I said, when I go through what I'm gonna do, you may not like it. Um, but again, you just have to try it. If you don't like it, then carry on doing another way. But what I will do is, as I said before, is I will explain why I don't like doing it one way and why I like doing it this way. And then it's obviously for you to decide what you want to do. Okay, so we're now going to look at the, the work area and how we stand at the work area because, again, that's really important. Um, because you want to stand and work in a way that's going to be efficient. You don't want to be turning around, twizzling around and not really knowing where you are. Uh, there's a uh, backwards and forwards lane as well, which we'll talk about later on. Um, but just for now, we'll just have a quick look at this work area. Where we're going to be laying just a few bricks in a little while. You'll see that I'm going to be working off um, this. Um, so we just have to pretend that that's uh, the wall that we're carrying on with. So from the work area, or the wall, to my board and my materials two foot apart in here and the way that I stand is always with my left hand because I'm a right-handed bricklayer my left hand will always be with my work so I can come round and do this and then my right hand feeds this way so there's no twizzling around no messing around or anything everything is just done sort of like in an orderly way which you probably have seen in other videos as well. So what we're going to do first though is we're just going to show how I lay a bed joint and then from that we'll move on to perks. So bed joints next. It's down 20 mil away and as I'm cutting you'll see the angle of the trowel. You're not like this. If you're like this then obviously the mortar that you're cutting off will just smudge your bricks below and the brick that you're going to be laying as well. So you make sure that you angle your trowel this way so you see the mortar just um, flows onto the trowel. Do it again, like so. Okay. So that is like the bed joint. So now what we'll do, we'll have a look at the perps. And uh, I'll explain the way um, I do it and why I do it that way as well. Right, so there's three different types of um, way of doing a perp. The first way, I've seen a few people do, but you don't see it very often because um, it's not a good one. Um, and what people do is they just give the trowel a little bit of a flick so the mortar stays on there. And they'll have their brick. And I have to say as well, when you have your brick, you're always holding it this way. So the frog is under your palm and your thumb is always on the face. That's how you pick every brick up. Uh, anyway, so this little uh, joint is called tip and tail. And I've seen bricklayers do that. A void in there, which um, collects moisture, uh, freezes and starts to disintegrate the, the rest of the joint there. And then before you know it, you've got water running straight into your cavity. And the other thing I don't like about it is you've got that slant. Okay, we'll talk about the slant on the next joint. 
which is uh, lots of ways of doing this one. This one is like a, an ice cream cone and this is how I was taught when I was a student and that was to put your mortar on like that. Okay, it was Right, so that's how I was taught, and you can see you've got big chamfers on every edge. Similar to the first one that we looked at, got that chamfer. Right, I'll just do the variations now, because obviously as you get more fluent at your, you, with your brickwork, a lot of people tend to do it quicker, but you still have the same principles. And again, there are dozens of variations of this, but basically what it is, is as I'm showing you, just on and then the two sides. Right, so they all have one thing in common and that is they all slant. So when you come to lay that with another brick, I'll have to go upside down ready for this, you'll see that there's often, you can squeeze them up a little bit, but if you've got big joints, working with big joints, you're going to be having to fill those up just before you start jointing up. So if you can get a full joint right at the start, you avoid doing that. Okay, so um, the way I do it, the way I do it is, again, to throw it on, I'll push it down and slide my trowel off so I've got a tongue, and then I'll cut it off as well. So when I cut it, that edge is flush with the rest of the brick. And then I'll take that piece off there and put it on the back because the back generally you find you get loads of um, holes on the back so that extra bit always ensures that you have nice full joints especially on a garden wall where you might have to be jointing the back up but again when you um if i show you again like this when you lay that brick straight away if i can get them in line with each other oh wrong way you can see that that joint is full Okay, so anyway, that's how I do it, and that's the reason I do it. So you have no filling up. Um, quite often, let's say you'll see bricklayers, they'll do a wall, and once they've done a, a panel, someone will say, um, let's join up. And you'll see they'll have this, and they'll have their joint iron, and they'll be filling one. That's just taking you more time. Um, I'll give a little instance. I was only uh, about 20, 26 years old and I got told um, the following day so look at me while I'm saying this one the following day um, I got told that I'd be um, working with this really really good bricklayer really looking forward to it because he was 10 years older than me and um, he was quite fast and we put the line up 30 bricks long and uh, when we got to like the middle um, he was like three bricks ahead of me so when the line went up, I knew that I had to go a little bit faster. And after about three course, we were both doing 15 bricks each. We were hitting the middle um, together, which was good. So we carried on. We did about nine, ten courses together. And then he turned around and said to me, obviously him being 10 years older, he was like the senior one. He said, well, we better join up. So this hand didn't do nothing. I just had my joint iron in this hand and I just perked bed joints, perked bed joints, perked bed joints. And I was just going along doing that. And all of a sudden I found I had a hole. So I got a little bit of dry mortar and I thought, that's a bit unusual, got a hole. Filled it up and then there's another one. And I looked and all of a sudden I realized I had a few holes in my joints. And then I looked back and I realized then that I jointed all mine up, but he was only halfway along doing his. So I then had to help him fill all his holes up and join up as well so we both laid the same amount of bricks in the same time but my jointing up was done twice as quick as what his was simply because he was having to fill up as he was going so hence my joints are always them ones now full every time so what we'll do now is I'll um, just lay a little panel down here with no level this, this is again, as I said, the first exercise that um, I used to get my students to do. So everything was just with your, your eye and your trowel, just getting used to your trowel. A level comes a, a little bit later on, um, another three jobs later.
So okay, so we'll just put a little panel together. Okay, so we'll do the panel. Right, the bed joint. 20 mil away, slide it out. Again, we're 90 degrees from your wall, long figure eights, angle your trowel, cut it off. Get your brick. Now, we're gonna now show a really important thing that we haven't mentioned yet. We said that we're holding the brick with the thumb on the face every time. Now your thumb, as soon as you lay it on the bed, then holds the back of the brick. So you've got complete control with your left hand of that brick. This only taps it. This doesn't do anything else but taps and puts, uh, makes the mortar like a jelly. So you're tapping it, but it's this hand that actually lays the brick. This one holding it, and you're gonna be standing, this is the reason you're standing this way as well. So you, you're looking down, and when you cut the mortar away, keep that trowel like that. Don't do it that way, because you'll just smudge all your brickwork. You're gonna cut it that way. Okay, so, and again, we're just gonna test to see how good your eyes are, because we're not gonna use a level on these. But again, just emphasizing how important this is, this part here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay one more, because this panel's only gonna be two bricks long. And then I'm going to revisit what we just did there. So the perp, remember, cutting it. And then before it goes onto the bed, you give it a little bit of a wiggle onto that brick and then rest it on the bed joint. So you push it onto that brick first and then rest it down. And then grab here and then tap down. As you're tapping down, you're looking to make sure that that brick is as upright as you can possibly get. Right, I'm now gonna just lay a brick on the board, showing you the grip that I've got at the back and why that is so important. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little demonstration on why this grip, holding the brick like this, is so important. So when you have your bed joint, let's just say for example, you've got a little bit too much on the back. So when you lay it, put it in place, you can see that that brick, if I angle the, that looks a bit better. You can see that that brick is way, way high at the back. So again, this only taps the back and the front, the two ends of the brick. This hand is gonna push down because your eye is looking down to make sure that this face is upright. So as I'm tapping, this hand is pushing down until I'm happy that that is upright. Just the same as if I did this. So you can see, I know I'm exaggerating, but you can see that that face the bottom is sticking way out and you can see that that brick needs to come up. So as I'm tapping again here, again it's only tapping, this hand is going to pull up. So that just pulled up until I'm happy that that is upright. Okay, so that's the importance of this. Your eye is looking down, this hand is going to move that brick as this one taps it to get that in the upright position. Okay. Right, so for the second course, I lay that brick dry because if I was to bed that and then put a joint on here, when I push that onto there, this brick is only half the weight of that, so I'll have to come back and touch that one up again anyway. So I'll leave that and I'll lay that one last. So all I'm going to do is my bed joint cut it away this is trouble when it's been used as a demonstration break it's a little bit grubby thumb at the back in the throg I'm looking over it looking down and then cutting it like that and I'm 
happy. Push it on there first, hold the back, tap it down, this hand, this hand is moving that brick to make sure that when I look down I'm nice and upright. Now this one I'm going to lay, so I'm going to put my bed in. But this time I want the joint on there, so I'll turn the brick upside down. Because again, this is the face that I want to have that on. Turn it round, squeeze it on, hold the back. Next course. So, hopefully, again, we're not leveling anything, but we just want to be looking to see how we were at the end. Go. 